Good evening, everyone. It's Stephen and Lily from BurgundyWine.com, Elden Selections, back in the Domaine du Chrome. We're in our little home, our own little home, uh, this evening, and we are going to taste Domaine Royer Côte de Couchois 2019. It's a regional wine from the Côte de Couchois. Really enjoy this. This is like a, one of our favourites this year. And um, we'll speak a bit more about the wine once I open it and once we get some wine in our glass, but... We've prepared some simple food, which we'll have the recipe for on the website and on YouTube as well. But we decided, we've done a few complicated recipes lately and we decided we're gonna do something a bit more simpler and even suitable for Thanksgiving or uh, Christmas. Yeah, thing. so we've just um, finished our all-inclusive wine and food tours and we decided that we'd like to open this bottle of wine, but we didn't really feel like cooking tonight, <laughs> so. We decided to do this really simple dish. It's a camembert baked in phyllo pastry and we've got some condiments with it. It's really handy to have at Christmas time if you've got some friends around. So yeah, got the has video. Yeah, fusion of kind of fig, fig jam, loads yeah. of herbs from the garden that are in season now, sage, yeah. rosemary, bay leaf, that kind of thing. Yeah, so you just bake it in the oven and hopefully when you cut into it, there's a really nice gooey interior which we're going to enjoy while we're um oh walnuts as well we've walnuts we've fig we've obviously the cheese in there some oh, herbs yeah. um just chuck in whatever you you want but it's nice to have some sort of sweetness a little bit of nuttiness and um, some, yeah. some sort of herb in there you know you can get the even contrast. a little twist of a balsamic vinegar it's nice but the recipe is yeah. going to be on the site and on youtube there we go so to the I'm preparing Important for you. Bit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I started preparing it for myself, and then I realised that would be ungentlemanly. <laughs> Anybody that knows Stephen knows that's unusual. <laughs> I poured your wine first as well. Thanks. So that was good. Okay. Yeah, let's dig into it. Well, Domain Royer. They've been in the Couchois. The Couchois. Let's talk about the Couchois very quickly first. Couchois is, and I, you know, even for Burgundy lovers, I would still say undiscovered. It's in the Côte Chalonnais, but in the very, very northern region of the Côte Chalonnais. And it, usually when we think about the Côte Chalonnais, we think about um, these kind of five principal villages of the Côte Chalonnais. One is Bouzeron, where they grow famous for Aligote. And then you've got Rui, Givry, Mercure and Montigny, these other four. Like I like to think of them as like islands of wine in a sea of other kind of um, agriculture. And they all have different different styles, different characteristics from the villages, different wine laws. Um, but there's this other region called the Côte de Couchois, and it's 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 where Domaine de Crome sits at the very southern tip of the Côte de Beau, and the region that borders onto where where um, Domaine de Crome sits is the Côte de Couchois. And it's plural, it's the coat, as in the hillsides of the Couchois region. And for me, Vincent um, Royer is really, I mean, he, him and his family understand this region, like, like in my opinion, like no other. Um, you know, it's interesting when you speak to them they're not really too interested in any other part of Burgundy. You speak to them about the Côte de Nuit, it's like, you know, so what? And you speak to them about the Baconais, it's mm. so what? You know, it's like, they are just obsessed about here. They understand this region like like no other, like like no expert that I've ever spoke to. Um, but like, they live there. They live here and they... they and they farm own, the yeah. land. Yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're Kushwa purists, yeah, I would say. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it, mm. yeah. And they, you know... And that's, that's what the best winemakers in Burgundy do. They get the most out of the terroir that they understand. Mm. If you don't understand the terroir, you, can't, you, you don't know what to express from it mm. or what you should be expressing from it. So um, they, the sparkling, um, yeah, zero dosage yes. that he makes is... It's probably my, my, my favourite mm. sparkling wine. I, I love it. I mean, and they make it in the domain, which not every every um, Cremont producer does in Burgundy. So that's it. that's a really that shows the talent of the winemaking that happens within this small small domain. 
in the countryside of the Kushwa. And um, and here we have another another star. And I always think when I open this wine, Ellie, Ellie reserves this word for only a few wines each year. It's killer. It's when she goes, killer. when she drinks the wine and she's like, boy, that's killer. Then I'm like, okay, we've got something good here. Mm. And, you know, we're not talking about expensive burgundy. We're talking about a very, very reasonably priced, simple burgundy. Simple in price and simple in the way that it's so balanced, I think. Mm. That's what we enjoy most about this. There's a balance in the wine. There's nothing that's like, you don't put it in your mouth and go, oh, okay, it's got tons of fruit or it's got mm. this or it's got... It's just lovely, balanced, yeah. Burgundian-style yeah. Pinot. The weight of the wine in your mouth as well. Like, it's got a lovely weight, lo lovely viscosity in, in the... Yeah. It's just it has balance in every every direction. Um, the other thing about all the burgundies that we drink, we say it constantly, is they're designed to go with food. And um, because even though the acidity in this isn't, isn't like really prominent, but it still has this lovely background of acidity that's going to refresh your palate when you eat, especially things like... Baked camembert. <laughs> there's a lovely balance. There's tannins there, mm. but they're they're not over expressed at all. Mm. You know, and there's it's it's a lovely smooth Pinot Noir. It's interesting because it's 2019 vintage, so mm. you would still think that maybe it's not going to be quite ready. But for me, the 2019s really suit a wine like this. Anyway, that hot, hotter vintage meant that the grapes mm. here. Where the Cote de Couchois has a little bit higher altitude, the Haute Cote de Beaune, even the Haute Cote de Nuit, Saint Romain, these villages, historically, there are a couple of, can be a couple of, two, 200 metres um, higher than the, than the actual Cote d'Or at places. And so, historically, not, not every year reached ripeness, but in this 2019 vintage, all these areas are really, really just starting to sing and don't seem to need too much age to come to balance. This is drinking really lovely at yeah. the minute, I think. And, and it's better to drink this wine within the first five years, younger, definitely, mm. because it's got that lovely yeah. pureness to it and you wouldn't you wouldn't want it to be mm. any other way, would you? It's just it's yeah. the wine that we love to drink living yeah. in Burgundy. Yeah. It's a yeah. It's the people. This is an example of what what the people that live here drink. Yeah, and we're lucky that they're our neighbours. <laughs> yes, and very nice people too. Yeah, yeah. Really so nice. listen, thank you very much. Another small tasting. Have a look for the recipe on YouTube and on our website. Mm -hmm. Have a look for the wine on our website. I don't think you can actually go wrong. It's not too much of a gamble to take a chance on this wine. And. Um, Keep in touch with us. We're available on our email, on our YouTube and on our social media. <laughs> Salut! <laughs>